Hello, everyone. I am Kelly Fitzgerald. You can find out more about me on my website, intuitivemediumkellyfitzgerald.com. Today, I have the amazing pleasure of speaking with someone who, um, you know, it, it's, it's amazing to me as a coach, how many different avenues coaches take you know, we, we all do a little bit something different. So, um, Susanna, I'm going to slaughter your last name. So if you would please tell people <laughs> what your last name is. Sure. It's Mihailovich. Very few people know how to pronounce it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and it, tell us a little bit about what you do, because I've been on your website and it's really impressive. Um, if you want to give out your website now, that's fine. I'll put links up as well sure so um i'm a top international success coach so what that means is i help people that uh mainly entrepreneurs i've attracted mainly entrepreneurs to to you know to my community but not all of them are entre entrepreneurs people that want to get ahead people that have a big goal and I love big goals, big goals that bigger goals than what they've ever achieved before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I help them break through and move into those goals. So, um, so I teach people about themselves and from three different planes of understanding, from the spiritual to mm -hmm. to the intellect and the and the physical. A lot of coaches in this um, field uh, that I'm in, the type of coaching that I do, focus on just the mindset and the physical, which mm. is great, um, particularly a lot of elite sports coaches and all that. However, being in this field for over 30 years, I studied psychology and then counselling and was in senior management most of my, my career. If you... In my perspective, if you uh, disregard the spiritual, it is hard work. You are disregarding the where your most of your potential lies, the mm -hmm. invisible part of you. So that's what I do in a nutshell. Uh, when Bob Proctor was alive, I was uh, one of his top people. I knew Bob very well. We worked very closely together. I would receive an email from <laughs> Bob every day. He was a great man. And currently, one of my programs that I'm running, I'm running with Bob's son, Brian Proctor. So Nice. Very nice. How did yeah. you get into this line of work? Was it something that happened or you just kind of fell into it? I, I was one of those people that knew. Um, my first childhood memory many years ago. I knew that I would be a leader helping people break through, okay. um, you know, when I grew up and with people all over the world and we didn't have internet back then, so it was big. Um, I was one of those children that maybe was different, I'm not sure, but I was, I had, I was a child that was extremely, extremely sensitive, knew exactly what was going on in, in a family that was um, that had experienced their own trauma, being migrants, um, and found those days extremely difficult. Um, and uh, I could feel what other people were feeling, but also I was one of those children, Kelly, that everyone was attracted to. So babies would feel calm in my presence and mm -hmm. would walk to me, come to me. 80-year-olds could not wait to see me. It was always like, how's Susanna, you know, as a child? I had the ability and I still do have the ability to, um, I don't know how I do this. I think you're probably similar being an intuitive yourself so mm -hmm. you could understand. Um, I can just first time meeting someone, I could see where their blocks are and... Yeah and how they need to break through. So I had this vision for, for many, many years, decided to study psychology and counselling, loved it, absolutely loved it, became a counsellor, um, and my whole career has been helping people, but I knew that I would be one day working for myself doing this. And I also knew for about a decade that I'd be working very closely and sharing the stage with Bob Proctor himself before I before I met him. So it was some, something, yeah, something yeah, deep. Yeah, very interesting, yeah. 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 Yes. How does your intuition 
um, play into when you are coaching clients? Um, I um, ask because I know mine is very prevalent. It, it's it's like right yeah. there. Yeah. I love that question and I'm so grateful that you asked. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of background why I'm so grateful that you asked because I've had a very successful career even before I was in my business um, and intuition always, always, always um, played a huge role. However, in working in a job um, in management, you, you, you know, you can't, I couldn't say, oh, it's just my gut. <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, and and often I felt that I wouldn't verbalize, um, you know, some of my decision making and what I knew because, uh, you know, being a woman in senior management and having that um, sensitivity to intuition, I felt that it would be just cut down. When I started my coaching business, which, um, uh, you know, uh, shortly after I started, I discovered a quote by Albert Einstein. And you may have heard this quote. I'm not sure. Um, it's a famous quote. And Albert Einstein said, now, this is our, one of our greatest intellects mm -hmm. that has ever, that we know, right, that history. Nikola Tesla and, 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 and Einstein are one of our two greatest scientists, two greatest intellects that in history. And he said, and the quote says, goes, it says, um, your uh, your intuition is a sacred gift and the intellect is a servant we have created a serve we have created a society where the servant has become the master okay. and the master has become the servant Absolutely. so this is our greatest intellect saying that your intellect is actually secondary to your intuition and, and then when I researched that a bit, I discovered that a lot of Einstein's discoveries and, you know, how he came up to, with the equation, um, you know, the law of relativity, um, E equals MC squared, mm -hmm. energy moving into matter, um, he, he attributed that to imagination and intuition, not his intellect. Right. So this is a man, huge intellect, telling us, uh-uh, it's, it's not about the intellect, it's the intuition. Right. And so I absolutely love that. And that was like, yes, finally. Um, but so, so for me, uh, my coaching is based on experience as well as intuition. Mm -hmm. So the information is there. I'm always applying the information to my own life. I do not coach people um, unless I have applied it to my own life. However, I run my sessions completely present in the moment. I do a meditation before I am in a session connecting with either the person or the group of people I'm serving. And the energy that's flowing through me, even though I may have a topic that I am, um, you know, teaching um, about, I am coaching through my intuition. Right, <laughs> so there's... Right of teaching and coaching um yes yeah, so I don't know uh, exactly what any of my sessions uh would uh, are going to be exactly I do not sit there and I do sometimes do a bit of a skeleton but it's absolutely what is flowing through me I'm connecting to your energy to everyone's energy or, or the person's energy and aligning with that and understanding where they are and where this needs to go so that's so that's my approach, which might be similar to yours. It, it is actually <laughs> very similar. Um, it's so important, I think, to pull, you know, that together. And so many coaches, I know when I started coaching, it was, okay, you do this worksheet and you do this and you do this and you do this. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. So you have to tailor things to each individual. You absolutely, absolutely. have to. Absolutely. I agree. I yes. so agree. Yes. Glad you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? Is there a particular type of client that you look for? Um, is it just because sometimes I get people contacting me and I know it's not a right fit and you don't want to waste anyone's time or money. So, you know, um, so what is it that you're looking for? Because I have a very wide ranging audience. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So one thing I'm clear, even though I've studied, you know, I was the counsellor and all that, mm -hmm. um, I'm very clear with people that it is not counselling. Right. So if you are um, wanting one of my coaching programs from the perspective that you have something that's been going on and, um, you know, a counsellor is better to, to do the work, and that's just the issue that you have. So you'll, you know, or if it's a mental health issue, there are great psychologists and great okay. counsellors out there. Um, so that's the first thing. And we've got that in, in the contract so that people really see that. Um, so the type of people, you know, Kelly, I have had clients from every continent in the world mm -hmm. um, apart from Antarctica. Um, my community is is from everywhere at the moment we've got europe we've got asia we've got you know the us um and there's a broad range of people that um uh that attend my program however the criteria is that you really want to get ahead you want to change some things inside of yourself so that you can achieve success and success is different for everyone. As um, Napoleon Hill said, you know, success is the progressive realisation of a worthy ideal. Right. So it's progressive. It's not necessarily I've got my million dollars and that's it, I'm successful. Right, right. You know, success is someone that has a worthy goal, something that is worthy of their life. Um, and they're moving towards their goal. If you're moving towards a big goal, then you are successful already. Right. So um, having something, a desire that you'd like to break through and have, that is a great client for, for, for my type of work. People, I also have many people that just want to learn the um, laws of success. Yes. They want to learn about the spiritual part of them, right. what research is saying about who we are. And I love teaching that material because science, what science is showing about you, Kelly, about all of us, we are beyond words. And when people start to understand that, yeah. they start to understand that anything is possible for them. People that want to change their mindset, people that want greater results, um, you know, people that are starting, I've had people that have that are professionals, very successful and want to move into business. I've had business people that are starting in business. I've also had people in business for years that have had global empires, multi-million dollar companies. So if you are someone that wants to have a better life that has a big goal but doesn't know how to get there and you're you're willing to learn and willing to co be coachable then you are you know you will definitely benefit from my programs absolutely i think so often these days everybody wants a quick fix this is an area where there's really not a quick fix this is a process this is a journey and to have someone like yourself willing to coach people through that journey, I, I, that's a blessing. I mean, really, it is a gift that you have in that arena. Um, I, like I said before, everyone has their coaching niche, you know, and I, I think that um, it, it, people get to a point. Absolutely. They need help. How do I, where do I go from here? You know, how, how do you, help people find that is there there well there's not one single way but I, I'm sure you have some some idea of where people need to progress yeah absolutely and I love what you said Kelly about the quick fix you know we live in a society that everything is available you know we want things yesterday yeah. but the beauty of the work that you do and the work that I do and they complement each other I think you know and trauma yeah. work is so important I mean most people have experienced some form of trauma so yeah. the work that you do is so 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 important in today's society most of the problems that we face are because of people's unresolved traumas yeah. um and, and and I absolutely love, you know, it is a process, you know, I absolutely love what you said. And the beauty is in the process. If there was a quick fix, you would miss the beauty of, yeah. of you know, what 
evolves and what develops and what what grows in yeah. the process. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got to remember, we are we have infinite potential inside us. The potential we have within us goes forever. We cannot use all of our potential in right. one lifetime. Isn't that just fascinating? So therefore, you know, you never get there. Right. <laughs> you know, you never see Kelly once or Susanna once, and you're there forever. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it doesn't work like that. It's a lifetime journey. And that's beautiful because we're evolving. I've still had some people say, well, how long is this going to take? Well, how long are you going to be alive? You know, it's, we, we, exactly. never, we exactly. never stop. We never stop growing. We never stop. We never stop. And that's just beautiful because we just become, you know, we expand. Always. Yeah, we do. Yeah. yeah. What was it like working with Bob Proctor? Um, I've had some other people that have worked with him and everybody has a little bit of a different story, but um, what was your experience like? Um, how did it happen and, and where did it take you? Because I'm assuming it took you to amazing, beautiful places and situations and people. Oh my God. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I've say. Oh my God. Um, after Bob died, the people that knew I knew him, um, one, the most common question I uh, was asked was, was Bob the real deal? And I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, he what, he lived and breathed everything. Right, the he taught, taught, yeah. 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 Um, just incredible I feel I feel him I feel his presence <laughs> just really um incredible he so uh, I had known him he had tapped into his potential and that invisible spiritual side of him mm -hmm. of all of us greater than any person I have ever ever met and I know a lot of people I've worked with a lot of people around the world uh, not just in my business but you know in prior um, uh, positions I have never met anyone that is aligned that has been so aligned and so connected on that deep deep level he uh, truly was uh, one of the greatest leaders and one of the greatest people that our world has experienced. Um, what was it like working with him? Um, I just feel blessed, blessed. I feel blessed. So Bob, uh, so I was, a, so I always knew for some reason, I always knew that I would be working with Bob Proctor. I'd be driving to work to my job and, and through the traffic, I would be with Bob on stage. We were best friends. This was way before he knew I existed. So when I left work, I just left work um, because I knew it was time to go into business. And that was January, 2017. I discovered that you can actually be a consultant and, and work with Bob so that was a no-brainer that was the next yeah. step I knew that that's why I had left work um and although Bob had known me um you know he wrote the recommendation of my first book he didn't know me on a deep level until I um was one of the 10 10, 12 people that um, was allowed to attend his millionaire roundtable. He had a meeting with um, in, in Toronto a few times a year when we had training with his top, top, top performers. And it was only about a group of 10 or 15 people at the time. And it was called um, Bob Proctor's Millionaire Roundtable. So it was an exclusive meeting. And um, I had, uh, I, I wasn't one of the top performers, but I had manifested uh an entry to that meeting mm -hmm. and um, I have to share this experience because it was one of the most profound experiences I have ever had in my life um, and you can imagine I wanted this so much and you can imagine that I was so prepared and there's no chance that I would be late for that meeting um, and I went to the bathroom and got to the room you know and when I entered the room 
there were no seats available. Everyone had already been there. <laughs> the only two seats that were available was on the left side of Bob, right next to Bob, <laughs> and the right side of Bob. There was no way in the world back then I would <laughs> dare to sit next to Bob Proctor. So I had no choice. That was my only, they weren't my only two choices. And I sat, I chose um, the left side um, and the meeting hadn't started. And Bob was actually um, a very quiet man, would you believe? He was an introvert, right? On stage, you don't think he is, but, you know, yep. and often before the meeting started, you would see that he would just be staring and, and um, really just aligning himself. And so he was there on his own. The meeting hadn't started and he was just doing his thing. And it was such a profound experience. He did not say a word, um, but I could feel his energy. Mm -hmm. and it, was an en my, it was an energy that I have never felt before. Um, my mind was actually, my, my brain was actually confused because it was an energy of, it wasn't a human energy. It was a higher frequency, right. definite higher angelic energy that I've not experienced before. So, you know, I would look, you know, to, to my right and there's a man there, there's a human being, <laughs> right? So my, my brain would see a human being and it was Bob, but his frequency was so different to anything that I had ever experienced before. Um, and long story short, I was so intimidated by the people in that meeting. And one of my friends said, you've got a question, ask your question. This was when the meeting was closing. And it was about, you know, how I was struggling um, at that time. Um, and Bob stood up and he looked me he looked right into my soul. <laughs> I felt, Kelly, that he had put, I've, again, never had an experience like this before. He pulled all my organs out of my body, mixed them all up and threw them back in. <laughs> he just, you know, he went bang right to the problem, right to, to my soul. And that was what I needed mm -hmm. to have my first huge quantum leap in business. And Bob chose to state it. he noticed something in me that he, he must have noticed that childhood thing that I had that he chose to stay in contact with me. And every day he became my accountability partner. So oh. every day I'd be, yeah, I'd be sending him an email and he would reply. You know, wow. he was awake five minutes after I'd, I'd get an email from him. Um, he was the best best teacher and mentor I've ever had people after my grand well probably probably a little bit even more so my grandmother um he he believed in me so much and saw that thing in me that he was able to help me um you know move to that level so absolutely remarkable absolutely remarkable human being I think his um He's someone that we should all aspire to be be like in our own ways. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard that from some other people that knew him, and it's just you know he he was remarkable in so many ways for so many people. Yeah, yeah. Truly, truly. He's uh, one person that you just mentioned his name, and people have respect. There's I've never heard right. a negative ever said about Bob, not even slightly. You know, it's right. just. They're truly remarkable. And you do see that. So his son, Brian, is one of my dear, dear friends who feels he's like my brother. That's how much I absolutely adore Brian. And you can see what a great man Bob was in his son. His son is a perfect human being, um, truly, truly. All of our clients that we're working on in our program together just have this utter respect for for brian proctor yeah truly incredible yeah so yeah nice that you've had that experience that's you were really blessed to have that experience and it's yeah. uh, yes clearly Absolutely. made a huge difference in your life i you know how you've mentioned books and i want you to talk a little bit about the books that you've written um but what was it first 
but I've authored a number of books too. What was it for, that first made you think, I need to write a book? It, it was that child. That child, she knew that one day she'd be an author. Okay. <laughs> and, I, and I have tried to write books before and um, just, you know, wrote a um, few chapters and didn't end up finishing them. Um, again, it was the Bob Proctor experience. My first training um, with Bob was in uh, September 2017 in Toronto. And um, Bob was on stage and although I was a huge fan and I could um, repeat, you know, his quotes word for word, right. I had never heard him say this. And when he said it, I must have been ready to hear it. It went through every single cell of my body and I knew it was time for me to write that book. He said, and every time I think about this quote, it sends, you know, I still get chills. So he said... Do, did you know, Callie, did you know that if you did not exist, if you did not exist, the entire universe, the entire universe would be out of alignment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if that's you true. Did not, that's that's true. so true. That's yeah, so true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All of us, yeah. And that just resonated with every cell in my body and I started to cry and my mascara was running everywhere. <laughs> um, and I knew, you know, I had been playing small all my life. Mm -hmm. I was too worried about what other people thought or stepping yep. out or whatever. So that was the moment. So I had seven days holiday in Toronto and I thought, right, in, in Canada, seven days left. I had no plans after that. And I thought, right, I will be an author by the time I get back to Melbourne. So I wrote my first manuscript in seven days um, in, in Ottawa. Yeah, so that's how it happened. Yeah, I think when it is time for us to do something, we do it. Yeah. You know, my, my yes. first book was very similar. I thought about it um, for a long time. And ultimately, the book I wrote was not the book I thought I was going to be writing. But I think, when yeah. it's time, you know, it's it's time when it's time. Um, Absolutely. It, it's just, I think, and you probably can agree with this, I think everyone has a story to share and yes. we, we learn so much from other people sharing their stories. Yes. So, yes. you know, I, I know there are people looking at you and reading your books going, wow, I wonder if I can do that. Um, have you had that kind of feedback from your books? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I also had someone say to me before they became a client, um, and I'll never forget this woman. It just stood out for me for some reason. She said, well, it's okay for you to say say that, you know, that it's possible. Look at you, you know. And I paused and I said, but you did not know me right. five years, <laughs> years ago, you know. Um, yeah, so, yeah, definitely, definitely. And you're absolutely right. Every single person has a story. Every single person has their own unique gift within themselves, the gift that they're meant to express in this world. It is their gift and it is a gift that if they allow and if they pursue and if they allow allow themselves to shine, it will be a gift for other people too. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. I think we're always, I think we kind of have a responsibility. Those of us who have recognized our gifts and used our gifts um, I think we kind of have a responsibility to look back and see who's coming up behind us because Definitely. telling your story, me telling my story, anybody telling their story is going to help someone else who is going to go through it. So I think it's so important yeah, to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. For sure. So what else do you want people to know about you? Because you're very well-rounded successful I've done there I have done that I've been there I got through it kind of person and I think that's so inspiring so what else do you want to share with people that you think they need to know well I would rather share use me 
to share about them, if I may. <laughs> um, yes, I have had a lot of success and, and I also feel that we've just scratched the surface. We're going, you know, to the next level of helping people and reaching out and everything. Um, and I have had, you know, a great life and, and lots of experiences and, and, and lots of people and all of that. And I would love to people to know that they are no different to you or I. Mm -hmm. And if they, if you just trust that you have genius within you, please just trust that no matter what your life has been like, even if you feel like you are the biggest failure, so what? So what? What you all see is me, you know, with my nice shirt and my hair done and, and all that and, and the success that's here now, but you haven't seen what I've been through to get there. Everyone okay. sees the glossy part of you. Right, right. Yeah. But we've all had, like you said, Kelly, we all have a story. We all have a history. We've all had failures. Celebrate your failures because they are a part of your success and let them go. That's just your past. If you keep thinking about your past and what's here now, you are taking it to the future. Make a decision today that you are not playing small. And even if it's one small step towards that decision, it's a step that will that can potentially take you to a life-changing experience. And I would love to share again my dear, dear, dear mentor's transformational quote and my dear friend who, who really impacted my life. Remember, remember who you truly are. If you did not exist, if you did not exist, the entire universe would be out of alignment. So that's Absolutely. what I would love. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that I find people always tell me they can't do, and I'm wondering if you have any advice for someone who says, but how do I be present? I don't know how to be mm -hmm. present. How do I be in the present moment? I hear that all the time. Yeah, that is such a good question, isn't it? Especially for today's, you know, the society we live in with social media and iPhones and, and we're always, <laughs> you know, stressed and worried. Um, look, I would start small. I would uh, let first of all, let go. Let go of anything that distracts you from being you. So that might be watching negative TV. Right. That might be, you know, um, friends that are really not your friends. Um, anything that that does not serve you. Mm -hmm. And then from that space at, or at the same time, what you can do is just switch off the phone just for a few minutes. I did this actually this morning. I try to do it every morning. If not, I do it at night. It could be just for one minute and sit in a comfortable chair and bring your focus to your nostrils and focus on the air, uh, on the air moving in and out of your nostrils. Remember, thoughts will come in. That's their job, okay? But rather than attach to the thought, just bring yourself to, to the air moving in and out of your nostrils and notice the stillness. Yeah. Notice the stillness. Yeah, it's a big, big one. one. Yeah. As you're doing that, just notice. Notice the stillness. Notice what it feels like to be still. Notice what your body experiences. And then keep bringing yourself back to the air in your nostril. If you do that for one minute, I want everybody to do this for one minute every single day for the next three weeks and report back to Callie how it went. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Because we are all so stressed and, you know, at least in the States, we have this constant barrage. Buy this, look at this, look like that, look, you know. And it's just so ungrounding for people. You know, it's just it's not good. It's it's not good. It separates you from you. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And create more anxiety and fear, which separates you from, from who you truly are. And if you really want to be a professional manifester, I mean, you know, manifestation is the pop word these That's days. The in the thing, world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you know, you're separating yourself by being attached to all of the noise out there. Yeah. I promise if you're still just for one minute for three weeks, completely still, as still as you can be with no distraction, you're going to start to notice ease and flow and you're going to start to manifest better than what you have. Right, and manifest what you want. I think sometimes people actually manifest what they don't want because they're constantly thinking about it. But really, yes. you know, make take control of your thoughts. Really, yes. you know, switch them up. Yeah. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And tap into the truth of who you are. Right, mm -hmm. absolutely. So much, yeah, there's so much to be discovered in stillness. What would you tell someone who keeps saying, well, I can't, I can't change my thoughts. My thoughts are always negative. Bad things happen. Life is hard. You know, that's one of my favorite things to debunk. Life is hard. Really? You're here, you're breathing, you're, you know, but um, what would you say to someone who came to you with that? You know, very negative. Well, first of all, you have to take responsibility. So if you keep bringing that to me, then you're not taking responsibility. Right. You know, right. you're your only problem and you are your only solution. Um, and if you think life is hard, and yes, absolutely, life is hard from time to time. It's the law of polarity, right? The yeah. law of rhythm is going to have both. So, yeah. Um, I've learned to be grateful in those crappy times because they're stretching and growing, and on the other side, there's something beautiful. Um, and look, I agree, you can't stop your thought. It's very hard to stop your thoughts. Some thoughts come uh, faster than the speed of light mm -hmm. so very hard to stop them so the thought is not the problem right the thought is not the problem the problem is that we get emotionally attached to the thought so when the thought comes in and it's a negative thought it's just doing its job that's what it's going to do your brain is a thought producing machine right <laughs> okay um and some will come in before you can stop them right so rather than attach the thought to the thought and give it emotional meaning and attach to the emotion, which just, um, you know, ends up being a snowball effect, like it's it just you're just giving momentum to it, you can just notice, notice the emotion and say thank you and let go and focus on something else. Right. Yeah. It, it's easier said than done, but it is entirely possible. I promise people it is possible to switch your yeah. thoughts around. You know, one thing yeah. that I was taught a million years ago when I started this is, um, you know, if you think a negative thought rather than dwelling on the negative thought, flip it around and make it a positive thought. And, you know, think three positive yeah. thoughts for every negative thought and you'll be on your yeah. way. It still takes effort. But <laughs> every day. Every day is an effort, absolutely. Yes. Even for us that have yes. been doing this for some time, right? Yeah, that's a great strategy. And also another strategy, and this one works, if you're really consumed by those thoughts, have a pity poor me party, but only do it for 20 minutes. Right. Or 15, 20 minutes. So allocate 15, 20 minutes in the morning. Um, and you can either sit or walk. For me, walking is great because by the time I get back, it moves me into a meditation. And by the time I get back, I'm a completely different person. Um, and just let them have a rampage. And then by the 15 minutes, it's over. Okay, thank you. That's enough. You've had your say and move on. Yeah, so that's it. another great strategy. As yeah. long as you only give it, say, okay, great. You've got, let's have a pity poor me party in there, 15 minutes. 20 minutes max and then we're moving on yes absolutely yeah how can people find you um so they can find me in two ways my website your two minds so that's uh y-o-u-r and the digit two m-i-n-d-s um, and i also have a facebook group it's called the millionaire roundtable it was named after my experience with Bob Proctor, 
and there's quite a few um, goodies in there also. So the Millionaire Roundtable Facebook group or yourtwominds.com. I would tell everyone, please check out that website. It has a wealth of information. It's a really well done site. So um, yeah, I was very happy reading through it. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's Thanks. great. That's yeah. great feedback. Any um, closing thoughts? We're running up on time. Um, I hope everyone looks for you, uh, connects with you, even if it is only, hey, me too, I'm doing this too. Um, because the more like-minded people that we can connect, the better it is and the stronger everyone is. So um, Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with you, Kelly. Closing Absolutely. thoughts? First of all, I want to thank you. I want to okay. thank you for the work that you are doing in the world. You are doing incredible work, Kelly, and it has been my absolute honour and a blessing for me to be here with you. You have such a beautiful presence about you, and I love what you are doing. Well, thank you so and, much. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely my honour. And... I would love to encourage people to get clear with what they want. Now that they really know, meditate on that quote, that without you, the whole universe will be out of alignment. Connect with your heart. Yes. Write out what your heart really wants. Your heart is so intelligent. And write it out. And I dare you to take at least one step towards that. And I hope it's a scary step because in the <laughs> scary in the you grow. <laughs> yeah. The scarier, the better, actually. <laughs> the better. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, everyone, please um, check out Susanna's website. It's really been a pleasure getting to know you. I know we will keep in touch because this is just like, yeah, we're kind of doing the same sort of stuff. So thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.